Hello and welcome to another episode of Good Brews, Bad Views. I am your host, Max Nestorowicz, and as always, joined by my co-hosts, James Thorpe. Hi. And Ryan Everett. Hello. And for this episode, we are beginning a three-part series of the three bad movies that we can remember fondly from our childhood, All or right. something like that. So uh, we're going to start things off with Escape from L.A., which... James Thorpe, why don't you tell us about your connection to this movie? This is my bit, first movie I remember being bad. Um, <laughs> it is... Uh, I Actually, watching it again, there's a lot of nostalgia in this movie for me. Um, to the way it's shot and the effects that are going on, It's the movie's very old Hollywood. Okay. Um, to, down to the fact that the movie tries to be expansive, but at the same time has sets that you can tell are sets. Yeah, but they're very big sets. They're big, they are big sets, but they're still sets. Um, this kind of goes back to our uh, discussion a few episodes ago about shooting into an open open city versus uh, on a, on a, a set, set, a closed set. Um, and uh, I was really, really hyped for this movie as a kid coming out. I mean, this came out, I was 11. When this mm-hmm. came out, I think Ryan, you and I mm-hmm. went and I went to this movie together because yeah. we thought it was gonna be awesome. Mm-hmm. And I just walked out of that theater really disappointed. <laughs> Same. Um, when we walked in here earlier. Ryan brought up the descriptor for this movie, which is silly, which yeah, is probably as close is a to very silly film, <laughs> perfect to the descriptors <laughs> you can get for this. Um, but now watching it again, I mean, it's like i said i there's nostalgia to it so it it wasn't honestly as bad as i as i remember it being and that probably has a lot to do with the fact that i was just really disappointed walking out of the theater less than uh hitting it um i feel that this, this movie is uh a bit on the nose at times with its jokes and with its just, attempted just commentary a bit, just a bit just a bit uh and interestingly yesterday uh because, you know, this is what we do. Max and I spent the day watching the Big Trouble in Little China cut with commentary by uh, Carpenter and Kurt, uh, Russell. Kurt Russell. So watching this movie again with that in the back of my mind was a really kind of a fun experience mm-hmm. because I think that um, that commentary track kind of gave insight in, into the fact that Russell and Carpenter were were very much. I mean, they made the film, but very much in on the joke of Big Trouble in Little in Little China, and it would make me want to watch a commentary track on this as to whether or not they were kind of really having fun with this movie too, or they're trying to be a little more serious because I, I think it's it's obviously not Big Trouble in Little China, but no, I, I, no, I, not at all. I think mm-hmm. compared to Escape from New York, this movie is purposely less serious. I, I don't know. I need I need to know more about this movie. So you know what you're getting for your birthday this year. From yeah. Me. But whether or not it has commentary, you will get a Blu-ray copy of this. Yeah. I, I mean I, I really do wonder that because, you know, they're, they're both movies of their of their time in a sense. Because Escape from New York is is was made in the in the time where crime in New York was I mean yeah. astronomically high. Yeah. That was the, the crime wave in the in the in the late seventies, early eighties that had, you know, the country's attention. And so you can tell that from that movie. That movie mm-hmm. is made from there. And this movie speaks to, you know, the Cold War just ended. Well, that and, like, the L.A. riots happened. And the L.A. riots prior. happened a few years prior. But this movie's more of a commentary on, like, the hedonism of L.A. Yeah. Than, yeah, definitely. than anything else. Definitely. Um, and in the current political situation, it's also interesting that Carpenter seemed to be ahead of his time in the fact that the... Uh, the the presidency and everything would fall so much further right along the spectrum, with, which yeah. everyone was concerned of it falling further left. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. So we will get much more into that in, over the next one hour and 40 minutes. Whether you like it or not. Yep. So this movie is available on Amazon. If you have uh, Prime, you can stream it for free or you can rent it if you so choose. Um, so we are eight seconds in. The... Uh, Paramount uh, stars have just, you know, made their little circle thing over the mountain. So if you're watching along, hit play now. <laughs> the Paramount logo comes up. The old Paramount logo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, speak, like like I Paramount said, this movie classic. really feels old. It does. It yeah. Feels well, I think it was dated. just recently I noticed that there's like the logo is turned fully CGI. 
for Paramount, and it's just mm. like, mm. yeah. Um, I mean, it is old. It's twenty one yeah. years old. I know. I had that realization this morning. <laughs> I was like, oh my pride. <laughs> yeah. So there, there's that aspect to everything. Yeah. This movie is the 1990s. Does the 1980s, <laughs> or yeah. possibly the future as well? I don't know. So I have some thoughts on these opening credit graphics here. Uh, I hate them. They're bad. Yes. And stupid. However, I do like that I think for the most part, it's always almost just one name that's ever shown on the screen at one time. Yep. Yeah. Which I kind of Except for like. like the writing credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I also think this is our longest opening credit sequence we've had on any of the movies we've watched. Maybe, yeah. Because yeah. this drags out pretty pretty long. Yeah. This is a while. Yeah. It's, it's going, man. Well, we need to get that sweet, sweet John Carpenter soundtrack. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Cobra Face. Yeah. Dude, Bruce Campbell. I, 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 I lost yeah. my shit when I saw Bruce Campbell's name. On <laughs> yeah, this movie. morning. I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had quite a visceral reaction. Yeah. I actually love that scene that he's in. Yes, we'll get to that when we get it, to that. Yeah, I, I like it a lot, Um, but it, to me it feels almost out of place, but I, I like it. I, it's one of those things where I think if the rest of the movie had been as surreal right, right. Yeah. and as odd... Yep. So Shirley Walker's name just disappeared from uh, the soundtrack, and Shirley Walker is the composer of much of the soundtrack for Batman the Animated Series. Yes. Yes, she is. I didn't no, know that. Shirley Walker is a guy. Oh, yeah. He. Sorry. Yep. Um, I made that same mistake until I yes. saw a picture of him. The, yeah. the name oh. is a bit of a red herring. Yes. yes. Uh, it's interesting that this was produced by Russell. I'd imagine at that point that's just because of the, the close relationship between Carpenter and Russell Oh, yeah. They had point. done three movies by this point together. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of that, we very recently uh, watched the majority of Together, and then Ryan finished, for the fir- his first time, The Thing. Oh, yes, yes. What an excellent movie. Unlike this movie. Yeah. yeah I've it's... been on a John Carpenter like binge over the last couple of months, just like watching all mm-hmm. of his stuff, slash rewatching all of his stuff. And this is by far the worst one I've watched recently. Yeah. Mm, I could see that, for sure. I Zoom I don't enhance. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, enhance. I don't understand why they have to talk about it being 1998 here. The movie came out in 1996. Right. There's no reason to set a date for this early expo- exposition. Yeah. Though. Right. There's right. none because it actually goes through like five years. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also a little unclear. It's like this this exposition dump at the beginning here. Who is the speaker? Like. Within the context of this film and its fiction, who is speaking to us right now? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, this scene, you can tell... That's my birthday, by the way. Happy yeah, on my birthday. Is. August 23rd. You can tell this scene is a pre-9-11 city destruction. Yes. And some 1990s CGI. Right. But it, it almost felt as in like as really odd way to say this. It really felt interesting to watch a city destruction scene from before 9-11 because it doesn't look like what we've seen in every movie that destroys has destroyed a city in the last 16 years. Yeah, right. but then the special effects have gone There's above and beyond there, anything right? here, and yeah. you see a lot of... This looks okay. This that looks giant great. tidal wave cool. happening Yeah, that here. looks cool. But like the, the, corrupt, the, the collapsing um, highway and such. Right, which terrified me as a child, by right. the way. And, and part of that, I think, um, I don't know if this is maybe reaching, but so we're all familiar with the imagery from 9-11, right? There's, yeah. There, there's often the, the, the big, billowing, horrific smoke that just envelops the whole area. Yeah. And that's not something that a movie like this with the special effects as incapable as they were back then that could do really convincingly, I think. So maybe that, you know, once the, the computer generated stuff can start doing that large, those large scale scenes with just the billowing smoke that we all have been scarred by to yeah. really, you know, kind of reach for that and pull on those emotional strings. But I mean that it's still like that imagery is again over and over and yeah, over yeah, again yeah. in no, modern movies. And it, it's interesting to see a movie budget or not, not do that when they're showing a city. I mean, it feels small. That city destruction yeah. scene feels very small yeah, from what yeah. we're used to seeing. But remember that the freeways collapsing actually speaks to the freeways that had collapsed during the LA earthquake that happened earlier in this in the True. 1990s. Yeah. So even Ugh. this movie is capturing now. 2013 no, was a pretty terrible year. Yeah. The, this this movie is even capturing the feeling of what they saw as destruction back then. Sure, right, yeah. right. Um which I found found really really interesting to to watch. Just what a Friday. Yeah, Friday. That 1900 hours, that's about how long this movie feels. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> so an interesting oversight though in that earlier you know city destruction scene is there are buildings collapsing everywhere but every street scene there's no debris coming down from overhead which mm-hmm. i thought was an odd oversight this looks hilariously bad oh it's yes. so bad this is unreal it doesn't it doesn't match the horrendousness of the uh tsunami scene <laughs> but that that scene is so funny it's bad yeah yes or so bad it's funny i should say um yeah. so we're what like 10 minutes in this movie and this is supposed to be i think like 16 years after the first film or no f- this movie was made 16 years after escape from new york it is the same damn plot yes it is it's the exact same plot <laughs> Now, Jurassic Park has made an entire movie series out of the same plot. Mm. So, and arguably you know. episode 7 of Star Wars. Or, yeah. Yes. But um I I think this is such a weird pull for them all of a sudden. New Vegas, Thailand, US territory to throw that in there. Yeah, just the weird appropriations the, of the other yeah. areas and cities. Um Particularly because they keep going on and on and on about the Cleveland incident. The Cle- escape yeah. from Cleveland. Later on in the movie. Like, I don't understand why they just didn't say they caught him a little bit after Cleveland. Yeah. yeah. I heard about Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that would have kind of... This cactus spray is one of the only parts that I actually laughed at in this movie. Just... <laughs> <laughs> transport vehicle yep. there you go this is one of the few times where i thought the music was cool like i kind of like just that real quick cue with him Beony, yeah. Beony, the western shaking thing. hands with danger almost but <laughs> <laughs> 16 years wearing the same damn thing we saw him in last time yep also kurt russell hasn't aged in 16 years <laughs> no and here we have the guy from america's most wanted <laughs> <laughs> yeah just about <laughs> The guards with their discount Star Wars gunner helmets. Yeah. I think those are welding masks. Mm. Stacy Keach, I, I often confuse him from his facial features and also his co- super cool voice and way of speaking. I often confuse him at times with Powers Booth, mm. strangely. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we got a line of folks going in the deportation center. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oops. Yeah. No touch. It. So, part of that exposition dump that that another one of those things where they they tried to make it sound better, but it just comes off weird. Is that they go the president's first order is exi- is signing order seventeen. Mm-hmm. Why is directive that directive seventeen? Directive seventeen. Well, shouldn't it be directive one? Yeah. Well, yeah. Does it, re- <laughs> does it reset with it every president? The same mystique sound. Yeah. Mystique. <laughs> I love how just comically hammy this guy is for yeah. this scene. <laughs> he, he's almost vaudevillian about it. Yeah. He's like, rah, rah, <laughs> up on stage. <laughs> I do like that the camera crew has the same helmets and yep. masks on, too. Because mm-hmm. it's the police channel, so the police yep. have to film it. <laughs> yeah. So what are we drinking today, guys? Well, James, what do we, what, what do we uh, pick out? I have brought the uh, from the local, very local brewery to us called Dragon, Dragon Meat. Meat. Hell yeah! Not um, the first time we've had them on. Nope, nope. Uh, we have Armageddon Armageddon Grand Crew, which is a, a almost twelve percent Belgian quad. Yep. Mm-hmm. To date, it is the most alcoholic beer we have drank on mm-hmm. the show. Mm-hmm. It is also ten forty five on Sunday morning. It is yes. also ten forty five <laughs> on Sunday morning. Uh, so, and I have had. Less than a handful of granola to eat, and that's about it. So I had a yogurt. Great. <laughs> I had French toast. Yeah, well, look at us, adults. Yep. yep. <laughs> that scene right there is actually pretty brutal. Mm-hmm. That you can be electrocuted on the premises with the kid standing right, right. next yep. to it. Yep. This whole intro sequence um, speaks to what you said, Ryan. That this movie feels long. Yeah. That said, the thing that I find weird about this movie is that while it feels long. It always feels like it's going forward mm-hmm. for the most part. Like, it feels okay. like something is always happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, <gasps> His finger's pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked through the plot specific hand scratch thing. Yeah, <laughs> right. they show back. Um, yeah, it comes back to that, though, yeah. pretty forcefully. Hmm. I, uh, yeah, the whole, the whole walking, de- or maybe we're getting to it here, but much of this 
first section of the movie to me feels like the training portion of most video games where you're just walking through generic <laughs> locales. All right, you know, double tap L3 to do a cartwheel. Yeah. Stuff kind of thing. The, the president walking into the corner like face first <laughs> and then slowly turning around is really awkward. <laughs> yeah, Uncle Ben's kind of a creep. Yeah. Oh, who's Yeah, like that too. Everyone moves oddly in this movie. Because they're holograms. Yeah. I had an interesting thought, you know, the you know, futuristic stuff and technology, yep. yeah. but it's very obviously pre like touchscreen interface, which we all, it's so ubiquitous nowadays. We just take everything for granted that it's just, it just has buttons specifically for numbers and that's all you can do on it. Right. right yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where if we were to make some sort of futuristic leap nowadays, you're like, anything is going to have some sort of touchscreen on it because you have all the buttons mm-hmm. you could want. Yeah. So when I first watched this film, I thought it was super petty that the president moved the capital to mm-hmm. his hometown. In Virginia? In Virginia. But now I don't Virginia. think it's that. I mean, with what's going on, that seems completely reasonable. White House South. Point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, doing uh, my best to rein in all my, my, my Trump comments today, guys. Yeah. I promise. Okay. <laughs> um, the, the, like... The way they talk about VR in this movie makes me laugh, too. Yep. I, yeah, there's an interesting <laughs> dig about this, and I may have missed it, but they're like, yeah, super futuristic and VR and all this bullshit, and you can be there, and we record it on tapes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, wait, what? DVDs weren't a thing yet. Well, they have these little discs. Oh, they have, and they they have laser discs, I suppose. Yeah, but, this is yeah. idiotic. Where'd she get that gun? She's on Air Force One or whatever. Just, just, There's just guns. Air Force Three, man. Frequent whatever. Farm. You just don't have enough miles for it, James. Yeah. <laughs> she also hijacks the plane and then mysteriously disappears into the floor. Right. And yep. uses the escape pod. Yeah. Like in Escape from New York. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. You didn't have that stupid ponytail. I might care what you were saying. <laughs> yeah. I, har- I, I have a hard time believing that the U.S. police force in the grim future of 2013 allows... Regulation ponytails. Yeah, right. particularly in the moral future. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you implying that ponytails are immoral, James? Yes, that's mm-hmm. accurate <laughs> <laughs> for men. Um, <laughs> this image, the flowers in the background. That's wonderful. Kissing the dove. <laughs> yeah. Woo. <laughs> we found this gif. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was on several of our futuristic tapes that we <laughs> confiscated. Yeah. Sh- like the, it, He's a member of the Shining Path, but also Mescalito Justice. Like they, Mescalito just kept, Justice. they just keep throwing names of stuff in. Right. Adjective nouns. Yeah. <laughs> like the, what, the Singapore Shadow? Mm-hmm. Or the Shanghai Shadow yeah. later in the movie? Yeah. President, President Uncle Ben is really creeping back there. Yeah. <laughs> He's Uncle Ben from Spider Man. Yes. yes, he aged. Yeah, well, I guess that was seven years after this, so mm-hmm. I can I can see why he looks much different. But mm-hmm. it's got to be odd being an actor who has two functioning eyes to mm-hmm. have to act with a eye patch on. Just depth perception or lack thereof. Yeah, looks like that episode of uh, Seinfeld where Kramer starts wearing an eye patch because he <laughs> like, actually looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, president's moving out of his corner. This yep. must be serious. <laughs> I didn't vote for you. <laughs> yeah. I do Why like a couple of his quips here. They make me laugh. Yeah. I just I just want to date her. I'm very concerned <laughs> about her. Yeah. <laughs> him calling him hotshot through the whole movie too is a ridiculous thing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you might as well be being like, "Yeah, good job, Tiger." Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, the obvious influences that have been described from Snake Plissken into Solid Snake and the Metal Gear series, right? Like mm-hmm. both visually and vocally. Yeah. And yeah. having watched this, you know, <laughs> this morning just before you guys got here, um. David Hayter does a great job of sounding like Snake Plissken. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's great. And I'm still super frustrated that he was replaced by Kiefer Sutherland. Nothing against Kiefer, but 
He doesn't have I the voice. I did not know that was. I did not know that it happened. Yeah, yeah that happened. Metal, Metal, Metal Gear Five. Oh, David Hayter was Ugh. furious. Yeah, I, I, mm. <laughs> and, and he. They won't talk about it, but the thing that it sounds like was that there was a uh, falling out between him and Kojima. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in knowing more, but yeah. <laughs> I love that the huge thing, the huge thing, and it has, um, it has levels, uh, <laughs> levels to it. This movie does feel like it's nine hours long. It yeah. does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'll take that's antidotes what vir- for a hundred, President. Yeah, that's what viruses look like. Yeah. Red. Oh, gotcha! Fooled you, <laughs> yeah. And ugly to survive LA. <laughs> Yeah, we're smart holograms. Yeah. Now, the holograms, in, in one sense, look weird, but they don't look terrible that they're 21 yeah. years old. Also, the little hologram effect there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not too bad. Compared to the rest of the movie, it's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, because there is some hellaciously bad effects in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I can see that general dude just making a whole bunch of terrible dad jokes at home. <laughs> Why did he oh, ever yeah. use the ninja stars in this movie? That's a good question. Yeah. And I like that they're, you know, okay, you've got a timer that when it runs out, you die. But we're just going to leisurely explain to you how guns work. Yeah. Know? This is like a really shitty James Bond Q branch scene. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. A mini nuke battery that only works once. And for only eight for minutes. eight minutes. Yeah. They only last for eight minutes. Yeah. You can only use them once. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thanks, guy. Yeah, just fucking so ask are, about him. Yeah, right. Yeah. So are they buddies? I, I haven't seen Escape from New York. No, he's not in no. Escape from New York. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, eh, I'll take this. Yeah, give me this thing, a little bit of this. And Kurt Russell's majestic mane is tough to look away from. It's I know. Yeah. This and scene... It's the 90s, so, you know, black like, leather. And the music here? Yep. This... Feels like it belongs in uh, Roadhouse. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's, it. <laughs> so that first little musical cue that I talked about a moment ago. Is more just kind of badass and cool sounding. Mm-hmm. We're here. It melds both. Hey, that's kind of cool. With all right, now we're just we're we're gonna slowly ease you into cheesiness. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like I said, Roadhouse. <laughs> yeah. The uh, Road this movie house. feels old too in this scene. In that, if this would have been made in the in the two thousands, Kurt Russell would have had to have gotten way more ripped before yep. they pulled this scene off. Right. Like that yeah, we hadn't, got, for, we hadn't gotten into the huge action star thing yet, no. right? Like that passed for a guy who was fit, yeah, movie right. fit in the ni- in the nineties, which in the grand scheme of things is a more you know believable physique. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's <laughs> well, not I think Hugh Jackman. I think in the he's first in his X-Men. early forties yeah. in this. He's like forty two, forty three. Who? Per Russell. And this? Yeah, yeah. I would have never guessed. Yeah, yeah. I'd, no, he I'd, looks I'd, great. I'd put a, yeah, I'd put him in his thirties here. No, yeah. no. He was, he's in his early 40s. I think he was like 28 in Escape from New York. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so he's got to be like 44. So hmm. That's a long way know. for the Ugandans to come, by the way. <laughs> like, did did he f- use the wrong name there? Was she supposed to say the Uruguayans? Probably. I would think so. Because Uganda's on a yeah, completely different sense. continent. <laughs> and I know nothing about geography. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or history. He's the only source of information he'll have on the island. No one else on the island knows anything about the island. <laughs> or anything else. Yeah. <laughs> at all. Or that they're on an island. <laughs> yeah. He's just been walking into the sea. Stacy Keach is an unfortunate name for a man. It is. Yeah. Or anyone. Hmm. Good thing he sounds cool as hell.
man, I just keep yeah. flashing back to the thing and how good it was and how <laughs> bad this fucking movie is. Yeah, <laughs> with that comical, comically comical gun. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love his gun. But you I know, mean, watching this again, Snake Plissken's pretty much wearing Neo's outfit from the yeah, Matrix. Oh yeah, he's very the yeah. Matrix. <laughs> yep, Mister Plissken. Yeah. You think I you think he'd get angry taller. about the fact that yeah he thought you'd be taller that he, they put they put blanks in his gun yeah yeah props to uh, Carpenter making a prop that actually um has a magazine ejects the magazine and so, goes oh, in oh boy As, oh no yeah that's so bad yeah I As, I want to look up the name for that kind of effect where you just <laughs> you just insert a different graphic on the on top of the film and overlay it uh, it's actually something that uh, Harryhausen what's the guy's name. Henry Harryhausen, is that yeah. his name? Yeah. Special effects giant. Mm-hmm. They, he pioneered back in his day. There's a great documentary about him on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Yep. Atomic batteries of power. Right. Yeah. Turbine to speed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have an issue with the scene because... Oh, a issue? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Not> several <laughs> issues? <laughs> if you are aware of how just bad your special effects are going to look in a movie, please don't spend this much time on a scene that relies on those effects. Yeah. Ugh. I haven't felt this nauseous since playing Resident Evil the other day. Ugh. <laughs> it's very good. I just motion sickness. The uh, the whole gist of this scene though is to pull off the Jaws joke. <sighs> yeah, and I've got an interesting question about that too. <laughs> I want your guys' opinion. This is just two oil paintings moving apart from each other. What is happening? This looks so bad. So bad. Wee. <laughs> And it's so it's such a drawn out scene too. Yeah, yeah. Mm. 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 Like he's playing tank commander from Atari, yeah. or the do... submarine game from the original Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, I really wanted him to water his cacti more often. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cactus doesn't need that much watering. Don't bring science into this ever. <laughs> Throw it down, Snake. This is, this is a very poorly designed submarine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he's going like five miles. But also, Snake's like, I'm going to destroy this sub. Yeah. yeah. Makes no sense. Nope. Well, I mean, he explains why he's taking the risk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Whee! <laughs> Right there. Okay. So Universal Studios. Yeah. Now, but yeah. Okay. So was that shark supposed to be a real shark that just tried to eat him, or was it supposed to be the Bruce shark from the Jaws exhibit that just happened to be there? That's what I think. I think it's <laughs> my always take was that it was supposed to be the Bruce shark. Yeah. Mm. Which actually, like, I kind of laughed at it when that. Yeah. Up. I was like, ah, ha, it's, ha, ha. it's idiotic. It's yeah. so stupid, but it's cool. Also, that supposedly took him twenty minutes in movie time. Right. Yep. This is. I mean, it's just the overlaid graphic on the frame here. Because there's no interaction with any of the lighting or shadows or anything. No. <laughs> it's so bad. Nope. <laughs> oh. oh, God. So no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, if only I didn't just, you know, jump <laughs> the sub <laughs> under this overhang. Yeah. I like that he holds onto that tiny, tiny piece of rebar. Right. Yep. Dun, yeah, I'm sure dun, that's fine. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> this part too, where they talk to him. Yeah, we've lost the sub. It's gone underwater, and we can't find it anymore. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Back to your point. It's a poorly designed sub. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm here. That's a cool voice. Yeah. Ah. Surfers with machine guns. Surfer SWAT. Yep. It's uh, skeet surfing. That's all they're doing. Uh. Skeet surfing. <laughs> skeet surfing. I love that movie. If you haven't seen Top Secret, oh, for the love of God, watch it. If you that like has airplane, better special effects than this movie does. It does. does. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Mulholland Drive. Yeah. yeah. That's a great movie, by the way. I'll fuck your mind up. <laughs> As David Lynch stuff will do, mm. yeah. So that's like the once he gets into L.A., that's where I'm talking about. How the movie always feels like it's going forward, and I think that's just because of how expansive 
Carpenter wanted to make the movie, he's always going somewhere. So the plot might not be moving forward, but he's always at least in a somewhat different locale. Mm. Yeah, at least in this one. Yeah. Uh, I want to know how many of these shitty rock songs are John Carpenter originals in this movie. Um, yeah. None. Okay, good. <laughs> these are all actual songs, oh. sadly. I mean, the movie ends on a on a white zombie song, which is fine, but everything in between is is yep. just trash. How did yep. you not see that person? He's got a red security Wearing a jacket. red thing standing So is this the same of... hill he just walked down the previous scene? <laughs> Probably. I, so. I did like this quick, uh, this short little scene here. This was fun. Stereotypical surfer dude. Mm. Yeah. That's a bitch. Hey. Mm-hmm. That's all. That's all, bro. That five head is, though. <laughs> yeah. God damn. He's just mad that he doesn't have hair as good as Snake. Yeah. Nobody has hair that good. Except Snake. Snake plus good. <laughs> this is a, a running joke that they really wanted to be good, and it's yeah. not. I had that in the last one as well. Did yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, wait, have you, you have not seen Escape from New York? Mm-mm. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. well, if it has the same uh, response as me watching the thing, then uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's not. No, no. It's better than this. Yes, mm. but it's no the thing. It's no the thing. Why doesn't I say if you like the Warriors, you will like Escape from New York? Yeah. Hey, look at Capitol Records pull <laughs> and him walking into an oil painting. Right. <laughs> Whack. <laughs> His depth perception's off, right? Yeah. He's going to walk in that big mural. Yeah. This is a big set with uh, maybe a matte painting right there. That's but... a matte painting right there. Yeah. This so. isn't, though. This is like. This is not. Ridley Scott level of street detail. You know, you know yeah. what's been one of the best set designs of any movie we've watched as far as expansiveness and just completeness? The Flintstones? The, well, yes. That probably is the best. But yeah. secondly, Mario, maybe? Like those sets were huge. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. There's a Big lot sets. going on. Big sets, tall sets. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. I like how Snake is very, very inconspicuous while doing this. <laughs> well, he's wearing black leather, so he just blends in. Yeah, I was gonna say he's he's yep. blending fairly all right. But the big the big beepy thing on his wrist, <laughs> sir, isn't helping. This, him yeah, this this is super grim. Yep. It's one of the for me. It's one of the two instances of this movie. Attacked by a bunch of skinheads. Yep. Very well, macabre. It crucified, dead, crucified. You used for you target practice. Yeah. Well, he put something into his gun, even though there was a magazine already into his gun. So, are there two magazines in his gun? Yeah, yeah. dual magazine so you can action. between ammo types. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so standard bullets and incendiary rounds. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty standard. So, what do you guys think of this beer so far? James? Oh, I love this beer. I've had it before. Mm -hmm. Uh, And Ryan? I like it a lot. I don't like it as much as I like Final Absolution or Sin Eater, but it's very good. Okay. So, those are easy to wear. Grand Cru is a non-official descriptor for food or beverage uh, to note a higher quality product. Um, Ryan was mentioning Final Absolution, which is a Belgian triple. Uh, Armageddon is a Belgian quad. So it is a limited release thing that Dragon Me does yeah. around May of each year. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, high demand, low supply because it's so strong. Uh, but hey, Belgian quads. Yep. I I do like the nonchalant gun yeah. down scene there. Mm-hmm. Um, it speaks to it. But yeah, back to the beer. Um, I would... Uh, Final Absolution and Sin Eater are easier to drink mm-hmm. than this, um, particularly Final Absolution. For... My thoughts on that beer have changed in the last couple of years. Yeah? It's it's too sweet. This okay. one I don't find as sweet, so I find this one a little more drinkable. Mm. But this one is definitely more of a sipper in comparison to um, Final. Yeah, I, I think Final isn't as harsh. Like you said, it's sweeter. Yeah. Um, you can drink Final without realizing that you're drinking a very high alcohol Beer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So well, this one you you can tell what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, I mean they're all very good. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Yeah, they're all totally completely recommended. Yeah. This but, is another big set. Yeah, yeah. This is this is cool. There's a lot going on. It's very tons of extras. The costumes are ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's yep. very dense in proper ways. 
This is Mad Max in L.A. Yep. Pretty much, yeah. At night. Yep. So they, they kind Thank of double you. back on that timing in a minute because they have a conversation and the timing says seven and a half hours. Um, Ryan, you, you played way too much attention in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm worried about that guy's cacti. I mean, I get it. They're desert plants, but I haven't seen a single spritz yeah. <laughs> since that first one. <laughs> yeah. What? Why? The Why head the on the heads? car is just bizarre. Yeah. Not as bad. Well, the disco ball just seems tame in comparison. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah, it's Gaucho Jones. <laughs> it seems like if they would have known that he was building all this stuff up, did the U.S. military get shut down for the U.S. police force? Like, could they have I, just I, taken I, the I island out? I don't know. Plot. They're all busy making sure New York stays... Stays prisony. Stays prisony. I do like that everyone's just like, yeah, I'm sure this is fine. Yeah. Yep. We all have guns, but, you know, this is fine. <laughs> God, that guy is just a can stack. I was just going to say. <laughs> yeah. It's like, come on, man. You knocked over my can exhibit. <laughs> More cool sets, again. Yeah. More yeah. cool very sets. Big. Like, this, this gives the perception that this entire set is very long. Right. Yes. It also plays, I, I like that they play it as a parade, so it makes sense as to why everyone is driving slow. Right, yeah. right, right. As opposed to being like, this is, this like is a chase scene chase, at yeah. 10 miles per hour. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Take oh. that, comically large gun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whee! This is cool. Boink. <laughs> okay, bye. It's a very Batman thing mm, to do. Is. Those were very uh, gasoline-filled concrete pipes. Mm -hmm. Yep. The one person in the world who does not know who Snake Plissken is or looks it's like. Somehow yeah. the president's daughter. Yep. Yeah. It was a good just yep. introduction of 30 seconds of doing nothing from those yep. bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> who are you? Well, they're they're baffled. They're like, is that Snake Plissken? Right. I thought he'd be taller. Like, yeah. oh, wait, it's Snake Plissken. We should shoot him. Yeah. yeah. Who's that short guy on the, yeah. on the motorcycle? Yep. I find the horse in this L.A. hellscape to be very anachronistic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. That was terrible. That was a terrible effect. Bad. Hey, the horse lived, though. Yeah. Of course the horse lived. This is cool. Yeah. It was and a good scene. Yeah, yep. it makes sense that he'd be able to do this again once, you know, in a parade caravan. Yeah. Just Bo yeah. the driver at the ready with his bolas. Right. Yep. Man shouting. Yeah. Some good subtitles. <laughs> I do have a subtitle joke later on. Do you? <laughs> yeah. Caramba. <laughs> so how do those things wrapping your neck but not choking you cause you to fly off of a vehicle? Um, I think it's more of like the mass of the balls like throw you off balance. I guess. Yeah. Because they usually are used to like trip things. Yeah. James, did we go and see The Counselor together with Michael Fassbender? Was that you? Yes. Those horrific oh, devices God. that you put over people's necks. That yeah. Insane. The Counselor might have been one of the most depressing movies yeah. I've ever what seen. The hell? In my it was life. like The Grey, just without snow and wolves. Yeah. Yeah, don't 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 bother with the counselor. It's it's good, but damn, this, is it this a scene makes no sense. No, this is idiotic. I love it. I love this scene. It's so like, silly. I'm gonna give you guys a chance, even though you've got guns drawing on me. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think the whole thing they're trying to pull off here is the idea that like uh, you'd get to beat Snake Plissken, the best gunfighter in the world, at yep, a gunfight. Right. Well, there's no one else around, so they could always just say, "Yeah, we beat Snake Plissken as like at a gunfight." Who is going to? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, you're in you're in Machoville. Yeah, so. that's true. I mean, their their outfits blend in with the sets. Yeah. <laughs> I counted though four shots. Yep. I I I like that this continues to show that Snake Snake just isn't a good guy. Nope. Right. Draw. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, mm -hmm. hey. Exit stage left. Yeah. 
Where'd he go? He was right there. Uh, what they were saying in Spanish was, are they alive? No, they're dead. Oh, well, thank you, Ryan. No problem. I remember some Spanish stuff. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed from just the things on the menu at Mexican yeah, right. restaurants. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is my first encounter with Steve Buscemi. I can't remember my first Steve Buscemi encounter. I, I, <sighs> I don't know, because the question you have to ask yourself then, as far as timelines, is what was the first? When was the first Adam Sandler movie you saw? Because it absolutely had Steve Buscemi in it, whatever it was. True. <laughs> He's in Happy Gilmore. Yeah. Okay, then yeah, that was probably it. When did Happy? I don't know when Happy Gilmore came out though. Here. Hmm. Good question. I want to say about this time, maybe ninety-eight. I always like this weird, stupid thing that all the movies do. Like, we need to send you in to do something that'll save mm. the entire planet, but we've poisoned you. That's going to make you worse and yeah, worse as time goes on. Sense. It's going to hinder your ability to do your job. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's either that or they've captured your loved ones. Right, yeah. Okay, Happy Gilmore came out in 96 also. No. Yeah. And is he... You know what? He's got to be in it, probably. I'm looking. He was in every Sandler movie just about in the, that era. You know, back when Sandler movies were pretty good. Mm. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> There's more of that guitar licks you like, right? Yep. Mm. Shaky snake. Oh, gosh. Enter Steve Buscemi. Yeah. Dressed like the Mad Hatter for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not in. Um, no? No. Hmm. The only other movie that I think he may fall around this time is Con Air. No, and that was 97. So, yes, yep. it does fall around that time. I think this is the first movie I interacted huh. Steve Buscemi with. Because he's uh, Billy Madison. He's in that. that. And I think that's, I don't know. And that, that, that's pretty happy Gilmore. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't, I personally didn't see Billy Madison until mm. after Happy Gilmore. Fair enough. Mm. Oh, star maps. Mm-hmm. A, this is a form of torture. A, <laughs> yeah. a recording of Steve Buscemi just talking at you for hours upon hours. <laughs> yes. I like Steve Buscemi, but he does not have a voice that I would want to listen to at nauseum. No. Or no. At nauseum. <laughs> Fit of grain. Inflation. Yeah. <laughs> Sucker. Snake is strolling down a road. Strolling the snake, snake, strolling away. <laughs> hey, it's Beverly Hills Hotel. Great. Urban Jawas. Yeah. <laughs> More, uh, I would say in this movie, Steve Buscemi is at his most punchable. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty punchable in this movie. His most punchable. I think I'd probably agree with that. The old school ambulances are, are, are an interesting pull. Is that Joan Jett? <laughs> yeah. Uh, interesting connection with this actress. She is um, hot, the hot actress from Hot Shots with Charlie Sheen. Oh, oh <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't move. And then Snake just moves. Yeah. That guy looks friendly. Mm-hmm. Yep. See, this is what I wanted from True Detective Season 2. <laughs> Weird yeah. people in robes in L.A. Not whatever the hell was going on in that season. <laughs> Clever girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the uh, the monk music that suddenly yeah. happens. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Apparently that his uh, tracker is not net proof. Yeah. Apparently yeah. so, yeah. So he doesn't have his jacket on. So if they were looking for Snake Plissken, would they just, just see, see a pair arms, of arms, arms just walking around? Arms and a, and a glowing mane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this next sequence seems like it's either right out of Bioshock 1 or yeah. Brazil. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> By Terry Gilliam. I love this whole sequence. Yes, it it's, is. It it's is very good. cool. Um, it's super gross. Yes. And disturbing, which is great. Bioshock one or Brazil. If more of this movie followed this kind of surreal level, I think it would have at least been more interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's to me, this has tones of almost Clive Barker in it. The facial prosthetics. Yeah. 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 In a way. 
Dude, me. Dude, eyebrows lady is yeah. terrifying. I like how it's subtle. Like, at first you're like, oh, that woman looks kind of, like, bulgy. Then it's yeah. like, oh, wait. Oh. Yeah, you, like, you slowly get the idea, get what's going on here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oof. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Balchinian? No. Yep. Ball headed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I... I don't know. That, like, the this, bad wig. Yeah. This this scene doesn't feel like it's in with the rest of the movie. Agreed. Yeah. yeah completely. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Bruce Campbell, man. <laughs> yeah. Funny thing is, that's just his real chin. Yeah. yeah. Everything else is a prosthetic. <laughs> Bruce Campbell does not like Snake Puskins because he feels his chin is a competition. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Bruce Campbell. Yeah. I don't know if I've mentioned it yet on this show, but I got to meet Bruce Campbell in person, and it was a good time. Yeah. He, uh, he debuted, uh, I don't know if it was a debut, but he went to MSU for a showing of My Name is Bruce. Yeah. Mm. And I was actually there with uh, Steve Cuff of Optimism Vaccine. Hey, Steve. Hey, and Steve. me. And, uh, yeah, that's right. You were there, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Way to forget time. James. <laughs> uh, the only thing I remembered really was Bruce Campbell. That's a fair assessment. <laughs> yeah. And Bruce Campbell pretty much usually just plays himself on screen, just FYI. That's kind of how... Yeah. Yeah. That's super creepy. Snake Pliskin. (laughs) 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 What is that implement he has in his hand? Scalpel blades and a fan arrangement? Looks like. (laughs) Yep, Surgeon General needs a gun at all times. Yep. That's a uh the the dart that he has in his in his hand or his mouth, like you know, they go through and they leisurely stroll through all the weapons he was going right, to right, get. Yeah. But if you miss you like blink, you miss that and you yeah, don't yeah. understand this scene at all. Right, right. Yeah, well you I mean you do see him like put it into his collar. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. And you see him quickly retrieve it from his collar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 The uh, I like the subtle scar line underneath. Uh, yeah, underneath. Bruce I, I missed character. that the first time I watched this. Right. Oh, <laughs> bye, Bruce. Ah, it's just such a just a grim scene in there, man. Yeah, the the whole movie needs to be more surreal. Yeah, right. to, to get more people in more people in robes. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, travels. you you brought up the warriors. Max, yes. I think that that would have that's a good analogy for what this movie probably needed. Yeah, um, I recently heard that John Carpenter kind of wanted to remake this movie, kind of in that kind of vein. Okay, of like a giant gang like hunting down, or no, 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 excuse me, remake the Warriors but set it in L.A. Okay, yeah, but I mean, like if, if each neighborhood was at least distinctive, yeah, in the movie like this, you would. For, as a, as opposed to different shades of brown. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you can even keep the sets at least looking, you know, somewhat similar. But you know, you you that's the only Beverly Hills is the only part of this movie that feels different from everywhere else. Everywhere yeah. else just kind of feels like the like hodgepodge market scenes. Yeah, over hodgepodge and over and market, over uh, jammed pack alleyways yeah. and stuff. So yeah, generic Blightville. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got the Quervo Jones. <laughs> hmm. Green Street Lamps. Because future. Yeah. Hmm. Fangirl much? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just want to get an eyeful of your sweet snake ass on the way up. <laughs> well, at least that and Metal Gear Solid have the same thing in common then. Right. <laughs> Butt shots? Yes. Of the main male character. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, uh, mm-hmm. the constant chatter of gunfire in the background is something I, I do like that Carpenter put into this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Korean. Again, they keep alluding They're, to all these different gangs. Black, yeah. Black, Black Jihad just, and Korean just Dragon. And just totally more, more adjective nouns. <laughs> yeah. But if I ever start a gang, that's what's gonna be called the adjective nouns. <laughs> but like like Ryan just said, I mean, 
it, it does speak to that. If he would have gone into, if the next scene would have been him going into Korean town, and it would have been distinctive, right? I think you would at least have been able to follow the movie along and been like, oh, these are interesting. All these different yeah. places he's going to. It's it's distinctive in that there are a couple Asian extras right. in the <laughs> next scene. Yeah, it'd be better, I think. To do all right, you're going to name drop two other factions. Show them instead of you know name dropping and implying that there are twenty others and never having anything to do with them. Yeah. She wants to read his boner. She wants some of that cycloptic rebound. <laughs> yeah. It's like now nah, I take this gun. Yeah. I'm busy. <laughs> That's all the action you're getting from me. Right. Snakes got. I got stuff to do, man. She's very interested in one-eyed things. I like this this image right here. Yeah. Um, I, I know it doesn't look great in the background. No, it does not at all. No. It's a big set, though. Yeah. It's a lot of wrecked up cars. Yeah. It's another big set. And I guess that's where a lot of the stuff that we talked about, like I mentioned, that it feels old. This movie feels old when it pans out like that. And yeah. And it's big. A lot of establishing shots. Yeah. It's like walking down the road in the division. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I didn't know because you haven't said your name till now, Tess Lima. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so guess what Roger Ebert gave this movie? Three and a half. Yes. Ha. <laughs> this movie had a budget of $50 million. Yeah. And how much do you think it made? Uh, less. Correct. <laughs> 25.5. Okay, yeah. I was going to say, how much less was that? Yeah. Now, it's a, again, t- talking in a pre-9-11 world, mm-hmm. it's an interesting poll that she's Muslim. Yeah. 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 Um, because it's a, you, you wouldn't get that portrayal nowadays. Oh boy, no. <laughs> it's one of those things that, like, watching these movies where we are now, you know, some of those things. Unfortunately, she never learned how to dodge bullets. Yeah. Them taking her out, I did not expect that. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I expected her to last longer. Yeah. Well, this reminds me of, like, from Escape from New York when Snake meets the girl, like, in the diner or whatever, then she gets pulled down through the floor by the chuds. Yeah. Yeah. Spoilers. It's like a one minute scene. <laughs> Also, she's you like, get to call spoilers on a movie that was made in 79, right? Yeah, she's like, oh, so they give me some of that tongue. Like, blah, 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 and then it gets pulled down through the floor. Yeah. See, yeah, look. It's the yeah. big trouble. Yeah. <laughs> that car. It's, it's they, like, they, they got it from the uh, from Batman Forever. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that car right there speaks to... That there's an organized gang here. Like, I want to see more of that. Yes. More flames on cars. Yeah. And him. God. Oh, you shammy. So apparently, Cuervo Jones only drives in these giant old cars. <laughs> right. Yep. But And apparently all the baby heads are removable. I mm. think he has two different cars. I think he has a baby head car and a non-baby head car. <laughs> no, well. Do you not? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is another big set. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's like here they're obviously just showing pictures of the set in the background. Right. But when they've they've pulled back a couple times and they've actually shown them driving through this set. Yeah. Because I'm such a noise guy. Yeah. I feel like this is the same set that Steve Buscemi's hut was on. Mm. Yeah. Nipple darts. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh oh fun guys hmm. bug eyed mad hatter wins again yep it's a regular mad hatter actually yeah <laughs> this whole hmm. sequence is so weird like yeah, it goes like, weird like the way... black and white and then yeah it should have just gone to black and white once and then faded out. Yeah, done yeah. that entire sequence and slowly, yeah. Yeah. I've been there. 
Mess Johnson. It's Utopia. Yeah. When I was working for a space science math thing. Yeah. Okay. It looks like literally every other control we've seen in this movie. Yes. Yep. Oh, he does say everyone's got one. Yep. I I like the sort of Damocles nod. Hmm. I yeah. like that. Um being the you know classics buff I am. Also, you know, if you're going to name, like, a space laser thing, it's got to be called Sword of Something Something Classics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because Star Wars had already been taken by this point. <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the special editions are about to come out. So, um, I went to a symposium in California that discussed detonating nuclear weapons in the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, um... For some of the most initial and first nuclear tests that were ever done, the scientists deciding, you know, how big do we make this to be safe but also still useful, pretty much were just like, eh, about there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'd like, too, that at that point they weren't sure whether or not when they set it off it was going to either just blow up or, or set the, the atmosphere, atmosphere on fire. fire. That's yeah. correct. <laughs> they were Actually, part of the things they were looking into doing was they were trying to discover if via nuclear explosions they could manipulate the Van Allen belt to weaponize it against other countries. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ooh, key jangry. Someone told the president, no, should we expect a 30-minute Twitter storm? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, sorry. He's trying to rein it in. Trying to rein it in. But he's then 30 minutes later, he'll change topics to the yeah. TV. And he's he's going to have a 30 minutes where he just pushes his remotes over and over and over again. Right, right. <laughs> and misspells one out of every three fucking words. Yeah. America. Oh, no. Cardio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted Cuervo Jones, his name to be Cerveza Jones. <laughs> yeah. Cerveza Cuervo? Cerveza yeah, Cuervo. Cuervo. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like a name from like Top Secret or something. It is. I'm glad to see that treadmill technology hasn't advanced at all in 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> and I like how Snake is in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have the broadcast? Treadmill? That's amazing. <laughs> Why? Like, what a horrible form of torture. Yeah. Walk mm-hmm. on this treadmill. I don't wanna. Do I? Just put well, your legs he, to the he, side, he has the He has the uh, quote-unquote virus. Yeah. Just put your legs to the side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Che Cuervo. Yeah. Oh, so, Cuervo, Cuervo Guevara. <laughs> yeah. So the coding system that they go over in this movie pretty much limits you could only have a thousand possible targets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah do you like how his wife's name is Eve? Yeah. Mm. Hello. And he also has a red phone. I do like that, that he has a red phone for emergencies. Well, what other phone would you, or would you have it? Answer the cactus! Yeah. <laughs> you, need to, you need to freshen up there, Mr. President. Yeah, that he's loose the... tie is not professional. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that, that scene there where Cuervo is in... Well, he looks Trumpian in that shot. The no, hair is done. Yeah. That's bad. That with, with Snake walking on the treadmill in the back, the just strange menagerie of people behind him. Like, yeah. they're not even his lieutenants or anything. Just... And Cuervo's bright orange jacket yep. looks mm-hmm. so ridiculous. Ooh. So, are we understanding that he just shut down the new Washington during that scene? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm surprised that we didn't actually see something, some overly drawn out destruction of Lynchburg, yeah, Virginia. Some, some horribly rendered they spent all waves their money on, traveling through space. Yeah, mm-hmm. They spent all their money on uh, submarines. Yeah. Uh, that was a waste. The, I love this Coliseum scene. I really like Everything this Everything about it is cool except the basketball part. 
The basketball part's a really weird pull. It's yeah. no, no, you're wrong. It's idiotic, <laughs> <laughs> and it's that one of a, the silliest things I've ever seen in any of the movies. It's we've so watched. silly. It's like oh, it's <laughs> over I, the top silly, though. Like speaking <laughs> of what we were talking about, or what I brought up earlier, it it takes the movie to a really surreal level. Yep. Yeah. I agree. It, that's why I don't have a nece- necessarily a, a big problem with it. Also, it looks like they actually got access to the Coliseum to do this. Yeah, because look up. Yeah, I mean, this like, looks like an actual arena, but there's like trash everywhere in this thing. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they. I, I'm pretty sure they actually did get access to the Coliseum for this. There's no other explanation. Would Would you have preferred for him to have gotten into like the blood sport fighting over there, Ryan? I, I think if they wanted to demonstrate some sort of surreal ritual in this weird dystopian future that they could have done almost literally anything <laughs> than say hey make baskets quickly like this is stu- this is so stupid this is just dumb I, I like the idea that Snake Plissken is good at basketball for some indiscernible yeah, yeah, reason for whatever yeah. goddamn reason well, he's <laughs> how are these guys Cleveland, shooting each so, other yeah. he was <laughs> They're really they're they're in suits, Ryan. They're oh, really they, accurate. They, they're also they perfectly the, staggered. Yes. Yep. Okay. They're the only people in suits in this whole movie besides the president. I like how and Utopia Eddie. has a and jacket Eddie, with Cuervo Jones's picture on the back of it. Yes. He's been there like two days. He's already gotten like custom silk screened. <laughs> that, that, that made me laugh the first time or when I rewatched the it. Guys are wiping the blood. Yeah, <laughs> because it's it's the actual like if you ever been to a basketball game that happens all the time, mm-hmm. they run out and wipe the floor really quickly. So the idea that they're still doing that like <laughs> yeah. ritualistic thing to be fair about it. This a giant scissor blade and a yeah. hubcap thing. The guy from Mad Max for whatever reason. Right. Ah. <laughs> She's like, I've made a huge mistake. Yeah. This is my disgust face. Cuervo having medals on his jacket is a good is a good nod too. Our little skulls. So, what kind of training do you have to go through to be uh, this guy's microphone man? You have to have a very strong, very right strong arm. arm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. steady. Like, really, I mean, he's yeah. the microphone guy. <laughs> is that a cod piece or is that a his cod gun piece? Holster? Is, it's a holster. Yeah. <laughs> Because he has a gun in his hand, so he puts the gun, mm-hmm. you know, as a representation of man's dick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Et cetera, All et cetera, sex machine from, from dusk until dawn. Great movie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Man, basketball. I hope they make me play some fucking basketball. <laughs> Katie had the same response to Ryan. She's like, wait, what? <laughs> no, it's <laughs> basketball? It's so dumb. No. no. Well, bad. they had they had Snake do the gladiator fighting thing in Escape from New York. They did. Would you... um? Uh, as dumb as this sounds, because this is the one thing that I have a little weird a bit of a weirdness with, that they make him go to the Coliseum, a football arena, mm-hmm. to play basketball. Right. If they would have gone to the Staples Center, an actual basketball arena, mm. would, have, would it have seemed as odd at that point? Mm. So quick aside, hold that thought. The captions here just make it look like they're aggressively singing la. La, 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 la. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, back to your point. <laughs> what, Staples was, Center. I mean, my, my, my point was is that as surreal as it is to make him play basketball, part of the reason why for me that this scene is kind of weird is that it's in the Coliseum, yeah, yeah. which is in a, like a stadium designed yeah. for football. For football. If they would have gone to the Staples Center, which is the Los Angeles Lakers arena mm-hmm. would it have seemed as odd to you then like a purposeful place that they make people do these things uh yeah i i just think that having him just participate in some generic sport for some sort of weird trial here i think is to me that seems very lazy from a creative standpoint if they're gonna have some sort of weird bizarre barbaric ritual for him to participate in don't just be like oh well if you can't sports enough in 10 seconds we're gonna shoot you I think they could have been way more creative with the actual tasks he was going to have to do. Okay. I don't know. I I take it that Cuervo, when he speaks at the very beginning, like, no one's ever managed to pull this off. Mm-hmm. The idea is that Cuervo's made an impossible task to basically mock people with. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I agree, and I, I it's that's accurate, but, again, it's not interesting <laughs> to okay. me. Like, it's not creative. They, he, there could have been so many other things that could have been impossible and no one's ever made it through that are way cooler and <laughs> way basketball. more within the fiction of the movie than fucking basketball. Yeah. So, 
my weird thing in this is they never said that uh, he, Snake has to like dribble the ball. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> from downtown. Yeah. He's, just he's on fire. Guy. Yeah. <gasps> um, no, I get that. Like, for me, I have less problem with the task and more of a problem with the fact that they actually shot the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like there's, there's the the interlude where we just yeah. watch Snake play basketball for a minute and a half. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Yeah. So they actually had to shoot that Ooh. happening. Or well, you can something. tell though if you watch that scene. The transitions. The yeah. transition because he throws it and it starts to curve to the right, and then it suddenly just straightens out and goes mm-hmm. right into the basket. That's right. Yeah. I played your damn basketball. Yeah. <laughs> I got mad hoops. <laughs> yeah. The change to them chanting his name is uh interesting. Two men enter, one <laughs> man leave. <laughs> Two men enter, one man leave. The, the everyone loves a winner thing is a is another commentary on LA. Mm-hmm. So right. I I did like that. Is that common? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. This is not Suicide Squad. I'm pretty sure the gun that he has right there is a toy gun. Yeah. Um. Wait, was Common in Suicide Squad? Yeah. Yeah, he was. The, he was the tattoo guy. The guy that Joker kills at the very beginning. Oh, right, 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 sweet yeah, dumb yeah, yeah. woman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fuck that movie. Bad movie. Yeah. Common was also in John Wick too, which was an excellent bad movie. movie. But Oscar winning it. movie. It is. No, not not John Wick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. This okay, movie has better makeup than Suicide Squad. Yeah. Suicide Squad didn't have good makeup. No, it didn't. No, it, uh, again, we Killer talked, Croc. We, yeah, Killer Croc was the only kind of exception. He looked pretty good. Yeah. But there's no way that movie should have gotten that Oscar. No way. No. And that's speaking exclusively on the technical uh, merits of the makeup, not yes. just the fact that the whole movie is garbage. That's generally... Corvo's getting upset. <laughs> yeah. Corvo mad. This is... She just screamed Cuervo is no bueno. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I feel like for this movie's just, uh, costume, they just went and like raided a bunch of Salvation Armies. <laughs> Pretty much. Probably. And just like passed out clothing. Yeah. Uh, that, that line, the too rough line, is ambiguous as far as whether it was sarcastic or not. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, damn you, Steve Buscemi. <laughs> that gun, Dodging bullets. That gun went from not automatic to automatic. Yeah. He, he just toggled the switch. Yeah. Also, this movie loves going into the sewers. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. Teenage Mutant Ninja Pliskins. Teenage Mutant Ninja Pliskins. Teenage Mutant Ninja Pliskins. That'll be our next movie. Turtles in Time 3. <laughs> uh, yeah. Bravo, Max. Uh, thank you. Because all sewers include green lighting. Because... It's, it, have you seen John Carpenter movies? There's green lighting in a lot of <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, he likes green lighting. Hmm. How am I walking through the sewers with thigh-high boots? Yeah. You haven't seen any Goombas down here, have you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking skeezy things. I love that shirt. <laughs> the graphic on the back. The, the, the sultry look on his <laughs> yeah, face yeah. Is, what, is really what adds He's like to Spice it. Guy. You know the sexy <laughs> Spice yeah. Guy? Shut up. Woman, I'm standing in shit. I want to get out of here. Yeah. The whole, like, my father sends you to kill me. Remind me a little bit of, like, Apocalypse Now. Oh, they yeah. To, they send you to kill me? Yeah. I hope no one can see my purple and maroon outfit <laughs> against this gray wall. Lurking Buscemi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He, I mean, he looks like a Joker knockoff. That's yeah. what I was thinking the same thing. I'm right. like, were you trying to go Jack Nicholson? Ow. Bye. Winged by Buscemi, a fate worse than death. Yeah. <laughs> what? The physics of that box going that direction make no sense. Well, it's an earthquake. <laughs> but still pouring the other way. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> ah. Oh, no. My cactus! See, what's a... Oh. 
Pod like cactus. Cat- yeah. You can't see. Ah, uh, you can't. I, I missed it earlier, but there's an extra in the background who looks like friend of the show Steve Cuff. That's great. Oh, we'll have to rewind. I want to see. Yep. Also, this room looks very similar in layout to the control room from Cabin in the Woods. Interesting. Mm. A little bit. A little bit. Good movie. I, I'm glad I to see that the, the earthquake didn't knock that motorcycle over. Very well. The direction of the earthquake was just you know <laughs> yeah. just right. Yeah. Just right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You see, and I told you, Max, that the red the 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 doll head car has red seats. <laughs> oh. The other car has white seats. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. I've been I've been bested. <laughs> Wee! Again, I'm just waiting for Gumas to come out after him. Yep, on a bed. Uh, another musical choice that I'm sure you love, Ryan. Ugh. <sighs> We here we here now have the uh, nineteen like fifties yeah. seventies seventies surfer rock. Mm-hmm. So I had heard about this scene coming up, and I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna sing some like surfer licks during the during the uh, podcast. But the movie took care of that for me. Yeah, yes, guys. it's been handled. Max. It's uh, it's a moment like I said that it's on the nose. <laughs> that plastic surgery sculpted nose. Yeah. I do like See, that response from Cuervo. Like, fine. Prove he's dead to me. Yep. Yeah, which is a thing that movie villains often just forget to do. Yes. Yeah. 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 Cuer- Cuervo, for all of his ridiculousness, isn't incompetent. Right. Yeah. Well, here's the thing about this movie. Like, at this point, you've had that big showdown in the in the Coliseum and mm. the escape to the sewer. Like... This movie really starts drag now because that big showdown at the Coliseum feels like that's going to be like the final act or whatever. And he's going to have the crowd turn against Cuervo Jones and yeah. blah, 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 blah. There's still 40 minutes left of this movie. Yeah, you yeah. guys, this is not great. Yeah. There you go. I mean, again, just name dropping names. some other thing yep. that might be cool, but we'll never know. Mm-hmm. Just. I, I mean, he's got his cool beach buggy right there. Yep. But it gets destroyed by the wave. Like, why didn't yep. he park it somewhere else? Because he's the crazy dad from Rocket Power. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, just drop bitching, man. We we. I'm not sure if he's a surfer yet. Do you guys think he's a surfer? Should he say bitching some more? Well, he did oh. say far out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't blow, man. So the the wave there actually doesn't look bad. No. Now, now it, it starts to look bad. Oh, and here's the music. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, this That's also clearly not <laughs> not Kurt Russell. Not Kurt Russell. So going back to uh our, our our listening yesterday, at this point is it uh is it Dick oh. Werewolf or is it um Dick Warlock. Dick Warlock or which is the actual name of his original stunt double or what was the name of his other stunt double? It was something Castle, wasn't it? Uh, I can't remember. But they're both ridiculous names. And that's oh, obvious. I mean, that is beyond not him. Yeah. Oh. I love Steve Buscemi's reaction to seeing Snake Plissken. Yeah. It's like, what? what? <laughs> it's the same reaction the audience is having at that yeah, time. to most of the movie. Yeah. Mind you that this is like Snake Plissken surfing with a like bullet wound. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. He got his leg wrapped, so he's okay now. He's fine. Yep. Bandage applied. Notice the white seats, Max. Okay, okay. I noticed the white seats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more like just horrified at this classic car being like being present in the buzz, buzz, buzz <laughs> light ear to the rescue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. There we go. I actually like that camera angle for that. Oh, mm-hmm. The the hood camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It worked well. Daddy needs his chocolate. Yeah. It's uh the the subtitles there spell the name H E R S H E, right? Which when I I read or heard the name the same way you did, Ryan, as the chocolate. As yeah. like the chocolate, mm-hmm. but Hershey spelled that way and, yeah. gives gives away <laughs> a bit a of the character, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Again, hey. this movie just keeps keeps going. This yep. looks like uh, 
Chum Bucket's Garage from the Mad Max video game. Yes, it does, which is a very good video game, mm-hmm. by the way. Got the Queen Mary. $8. And the Queen Mary, another Last hint. known sighting yeah. of the Bluth family. Yeah. <laughs> Dutch Angles. Yes. It's fun. Snake's leg suddenly hurts now. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to marry her. Yeah. Thanks for the exposition, Steve Buscemi. <laughs> yeah. Steve Explainy. <laughs> You're not hallucinating. <laughs> yeah. As silly as that is, particularly with the music that hits. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. Um, the guy all of a sudden appearing in the background that the audience can't see, but Snake could sense right. is a is a nice I like snake thing there. Right. Well, it's because the the back wasn't in focus, but no, but I mean, even even that yeah. perspective there is that we're not supposed to see him, but right. Snake, who is walking and injured and being talked to, is still well, is still able to notice eye, that so guy. So he's got like supervision in his right yeah. eye. Yeah. It's all pretty in here. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice and clean. It's like the Ish. good section of Bioshock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, Bioshock is so good. Uh, random movie trivia: Gore Verbinski was the director longest attached to direct the Bioshock movie when it was going to be made into a movie, but it obviously hasn't happened. All right, so if you look closely, right, that dude right there in the background, that extra, big is trouble. in big trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's no way the way that these two interact would be okay in today. <laughs> no, not at all. No. That is Pam Greer, mm-hmm. um, which many consider to be the first female action star. Um, she was in a lot of prison black exploitation yeah. films yep. in the seventies. Yep. But uh Quentin Tarantino is a huge fan of her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And knowing the way that John Carpenter is, I'm sure he very much it was a thrill for him to get Pam Greer into an mm-hmm. action movie of his too. Mm-hmm. But the the modulation on Pam Greer's voice here, it's the same as it was in Dude, Where's My Car? Mm. For the right. for the trans okay. right. villain, quote-unquote. Yeah. <laughs> Played by a woman, but just yeah. given a mask, Man, more masculine-sounding voice. Man voice yeah. effect. Dude, you just coughed in my mouth. Yeah, that's gross, man. Now, the way that um, the the problem typically here comes from the way that Snake interacts with Hershey. Mm-hmm. Also, the name of Hershey. Mm-hmm. Now that we see that it's actually spelled, yeah. but um, having a trans character in '96 was actually a pretty yeah, a, particularly a, a trans woman of color right mm-hmm. character is actually a pretty progressive move on Carpenter's part. It's, and, I would say that's still a progressive move on today uh, by today's standards. Oh yeah, yeah, and that having that character be completely functional, powerful, and everything right. else. I mean, mm-hmm. the the problem comes from, from the way that Snake interacts with mm-hmm. with the character, not the character in and of itself. All right. <laughs> kind of well, it's on. more of baggage from their past. Yeah, yeah, and it's less of it, it's still him being yeah. a jerk though yeah but it also comes out that he's being a jerk because uh hershey previously known as carjack malone mm-hmm. screwed him up in cleveland, cleveland. In the hey, cleveland i want to see escape from cleveland right? yeah that'd be a really boring movie just... yeah it would be cleveland sucks yeah it's not very <laughs> good good beer yeah but it's in ohio the armpit of america we had this discussion yesterday. We did. <laughs> Max calls it the armpit. Yep. I prefer to New Jersey as the armpit. I call Ohio the third nipple of America because <laughs> okay. it's completely extraneous and unnecessary. <laughs> and I like to refer to Florida as the unsolicited dick pic. Of America. <laughs> all right. But yeah, just all those guys, just uh, Big Trouble Little China, hmm. Wing Kong. Uh, here's another scene where Snake is just not even part of it they're all discussing yeah. everything and he's just in the background like, just like whimpering, oh my God, I, vomiting everything hurts yeah oh god 
That's some bad effects. That's a rough scene right there. Mmm, beer. Remember yeah. this Hollywood sign? Yeah. I must have faded out when I was watching this initially because I do not remember that at all. No? Oh. Well, I usually also drink when I watch these. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's probably a good choice. Yeah. Because it's just like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> See, if, if if Steve Buscemi's out of focus and in the background, he could pass for a Jack Nicholson dressed as the Joker. Yeah. Or a person. But in a bad... Mm, <laughs> <laughs> just a bad cosplayer. <laughs> Boink. Look at how clever Steve Buscemi is. Mm-hmm. Going up on the main streets of future LA. Yeah. <laughs> the Texas Switch, which isn't a thing. Nah. Wee! Oh! If your he... reaction's not what, <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? Fuck. Let's all fly into I this painting. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to say to you. Yeah, this. As I literally <laughs> could not and still can't believe my eyes that I'm watching. That looks yeah. so bad. My literal and just metaphorical mouths are agape here. Yeah, I mean it is. It is green screen on a painting with black lines around everything. Yep. And how? Notice the red seats. Yes, Max. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but just okay. The 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 hang gliders are coming back. I'll we'll the, riff on those again in a second. Yeah. The Happy Kingdom because Disney was a no go. Yeah, <laughs> apparently Disney didn't want their name in this movie. Yep. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah. I wonder what the direction for this scene was. Look happy. Yeah. <laughs> just shoot guns. Yeah. Yeah. Very obviously Disneyland. Yep. I like that shot. Yeah. Nice model. Yeah. It's only a model. <laughs> this reminds me a lot of Waterworld. Yeah. I'd give you that. It's LA, so we've got hydraulics. Yeah. Yeah. There's cheering crowds. Everybody's freaking packing, man. Yeah. That's a lot of guns. A guy with a shotgun is just really going for yeah, it right yep. there. Like, That'd be funny I've if got in the... the good kind of shotgun. Yeah, There's a guy with a Tommy gun behind him. It's funny if in their celebratory air shooting, they just took down all the hang gliders. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just shredded them. Ah, nice little Bank of America plug there. Yeah, yeah. A seventeen this terrible, terrible helicopter. Terrible helicopter. <laughs> Oof, this helicopter is rough with the double blades for no reason. Yeah. Yep. What's going? On? I don't what, know. What, what, what are all these people doing here? What, what part of future technology causes your helicopter to open up just because? Yeah, <laughs> or the fact that you have retractable blades into the helicopter? Right. That's another one of those things. that's like that sounds cool. Can you do it, special effects guys? I, I guess. I, yeah. I mean, sure. Do whatever you want, but okay. Killed the guys who know how to fly. You're on the TV. I'm going to go take a cab somewhere. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. <laughs> now, the, the, the juxtaposition here between Cuervo and the president is kind of neat, I think. Right. That Cuervo is, is there amongst his people leading mm -hmm. the charge and, right. you know, the, everything else. And the president, multiple times that we've seen is... Hiding under tables right. or behind a hallway, away alone by himself to oh. just be yeah. one like one prey. <laughs> yeah, this like that guy in the background is clearly just standing on something and they've rotated the camera ninety <laughs> degrees. <laughs> <laughs> like this, this is Steve so bad. It's one of those things. You mean, <laughs> I like how they they built the design into the. Uh, into those so that so they're like no that's not the wire holding them up that's yeah. part of yeah, that's part of the hang glider yeah, yeah. um but it, this that this whole sequence screams of one where they could have shown them just <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine just yeah. seeing a, Steve Buscemi hang glider, Steve Buscemi just delivering Steve Buscemi to your current location um shut him down <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that uh they should have just shown them jumping off of the Queen Mary and then cut to this. Right. Yep. We don't need those in transit shots. No, yep. we don't. Particularly for a movie that's already this long. Yeah.
No, call me Snake. You just hear from the background, call me Snake. Over the door. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's good information um, to request. Um, yes. Ooh. Oh, man. Whose side are you on? Yeah. Map of the stars, Eddie slash. What like is he picking up? By the balls right now. Yeah. Yeah. Fooled <laughs> <laughs> <Told> you. <laughs> oh. The guy's got a nice little sawed off there. I. I like that one of the guys still makes the gun motion noises right there. <laughs> yep. Or noises, but gun motion, even though yep. the, the, muzzle flash. the muzzle flash went away. They didn't budget for that many muzzle flashes, James. No. Nope. It's one too many. Mm-hmm. There's good hats in this movie. How in the Christ are we supposed to believe that these <laughs> things are still generating lift? <laughs> there is no reason for any of these people to remain aloft at this point. This the is power walking speed. Oh <laughs> Look at this. Hang gliders. Look at how slow they're the going. Air. Yeah. This is the scene that feels old Hollywood to me. Yeah. Like this feels like stout soundstage at Disney going and watching or Universal Studios and going and watching right. like the old Indiana Jones special effects yeah. show. Yeah. Did, did either of you two go see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That, that feels oh, exactly yeah. like yeah. this. If if you slapped just like a a Ghidra costume on one of these guys, that <laughs> would feel better. Run away! <laughs> I'm a flying snake. Yeah. Good accuracy by yeah, uh, Pliskin. Very there. accurate with his, with his hang glider. Yep. He knocked Cuervo's hat off. Half of his power is gone. Yeah. Yep. His weak spot is exposed. Yeah. He's lost one point of charisma. Yeah. <laughs> Still flying around. She comes just, just okay. No, must yep. be Pam Greer. Yep. Or her weave. <laughs> oh man, he's leaking raspberry wow, jelly. That when he bites him here, it just keeps going yeah. at it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh no, <laughs> they can see my chest now. Yeah, now he's arms, hair, and a slash. <laughs> yeah. I don't, Ow. and a lot of movies do this. They have fight scenes like this, which are, you know, close quarters and brutal. And yeah. the, there are a lot of, like, bone and ligament snapping sound effects, yep. yet the person that they're done to has no problem operating those limbs after that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you just saw him, like, favoring the left arm because yeah. he gotten punched in the right arm. And we're hearing all sorts of now crunching. Now like, ah, I can't yeah. do better arm again. Something subtle about that fight that I do like is that oftentimes when you have the, like, the, uh, you know the the hero and the villain get together am- amongst a big fight and are punching each other. Mm-hmm. It's it, they feel very separated from the fight, even though there's stuff going on. Yeah, Carpenter's use of people actually running in front of them mm-hmm. makes yeah, yeah. it feel like they're amidst something that's actually yeah, like yeah. 360 degrees around them. Yeah, unlike in um, Dark Knight Rises, when Bane and Batman are just punching each other, punching each other on the steps. Yeah, the in- the inexplicable charge into gunfire fight yep. where the villains just drop all of their guns and they're like, "Okay, it's punching time Gosh, now." Yeah. <laughs> time for fisticuffs. Uh, Snake here. Pugilism. Yeah, <laughs> Snake here is not as is not nowhere near as thorough as I would imagine Cuervo Jones would have been. Right. Cuervo requested his head. Snake punches him. He's like, "Yeah, I'm sure that's yep. fine. Yeah, he's dead. We're good. We're good. See you guys." They also fit a ton of people into this helicopter. Yeah, they do. I feel like there's a Mexican stereotype joke in there somewhere, but we'll <laughs> leave that one on the cutting floor. Yeah. Oh, that guy died. Okay, bye. Oh. She you just... die in this movie. You have to shoot your oh. gun as you go down. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, oh, no. she's in this movie. Oof. Oof. That's some rough effects, man. The, yep. Just immediately from no speed to full speed. Yep. <laughs> this guy. Aha! Gotcha. There's no way that rope works the way that it's tied like that right right there either. The only I thought about that. And the only way it does is if he comes around the back like he did and takes the actual loop part and then brings it to the end of the ski, the yes. skid or whatever. Yes, that would work there. But the the fact that he wrapped it around <laughs> yeah, trying to make it look like it would tie it through the rope as it's done right there yeah. is not how that would work. <laughs> What's going on? Ooh. 
tanker. I also think it's super lazy here that the helicopter isn't like shaking in a lot of these shots. Okay. The shots of the people, not here, but like the external shots of the co- the chopper. Like it's not moving at all. It's perfectly still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I go. refuse to use your new name. <laughs> yeah. Snake is uh is transphobic. <laughs> Apparently so. Oh no. oh no. Why couldn't that have been Buscemi? Yeah. I feel like we should <laughs> like uh <laughs> like um Robert Downey Jr.'s joke in the Marvel movies, like how do, how does Fury even see these? And yeah. He turns. <laughs> It's a great shot, by yeah, hell yeah, man! And again, he's, him in the chest. Ah, ah, he's, ah. he's not as thorough as as, <laughs> yeah. as Cuervo would have been. Whoa, that's Cuervo Cerveza. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the second. What? That's let me, let me put on my indestructible coat. Yeah. Fire doesn't reach into the front seat. Yeah. Nope. Also, that is not the Matterhorn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the Matterhorn? Save me. <laughs> I didn't notice the president clutching the Bible. The Bible there. Yeah. That fire would be melting them right now. Yep. Yeah. The, uh, that's a pretty like ignominious death for, yep. for Hershey <laughs> and, and goons. Yep. It's almost it, like you kind of said, Ryan, a little, bit, a little bit lazy. Like, they got to the point where they're like, okay, how do we get rid of Hershey and her goons? Yeah, it's like, okay. Uh, we'll just kill them. Yeah. With a fire. With, With fire. Fire that only burns two inches away from where it is. Yep. It's contained fire. <laughs> it sounds like he's constipated. Yeah, it does. Just clutching it in. Is that part of the flu? I mean, he... Really does just have the flu at this point, right? It could be, yeah. Yeah. Spoilers. He has the flu. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be done with this movie. All of those jumps would break people's legs yeah. and yes. not kill them. Yes. Or hips. Yes. Well, we've seen this movie has very interesting ideas as far as physics and, you know, aerial transport. Yeah. Yep. The uh, the helicopter directly crashing into the ground and immediately stopping with no like skidding yeah. or anything is also interesting. That that's a real explosion right yeah. there though. Yeah. So bravo for that. So where's put, the put, army put, of just put, put, dirt bike forest people from London has fallen? <laughs> <laughs> They're in London. It's the same place, right? <laughs> yeah. London, LA. No, it's La 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 La. <laughs> London Angeles. London Angeles. Here's more of the 360 degree shooting that doesn't <laughs> kill anybody. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't it have been better if he would have died with the uh, with the black box? Although I guess they need it to stop the impending yeah. invasion, which is a completely yeah. background story that no yep. one has really mentions anymore. Nope. It's like until oh, yeah, the very end the here. Of Miami. Yeah. Right. Cuba is doing stuff. Yeah. That's a really, really sneer of a face right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> now it's my turn to be smug. Yeah. Stacy Keach looks drunk there. Anyone else? Yeah. Guys? I hope he is. <laughs> for his sake. He's making a concerted effort to maintain his balance there. Yep. Yeah. Why am I here? I just want to water my cacti. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That smoke in the air is not good for my cactus. <laughs> what do oh. you do for the product part? You didn't terminate my dependent. Yeah. My health care is way too expensive <laughs> because we repealed the Affordable Care Act. <laughs> yeah. No, I, no. End up costing trillions of dollars. I heard they're just getting rid of Obamacare, not the Affordable Care Act. Oh, yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> Did you have a belly ring, or was that just weird lighting a moment I ago? I think it was weird lighting. I think it's okay. weird lighting. Yeah, I think this is. We're this ten years later. Yes, belly ring. Yeah, this is pre belly ring, right? Mm. 
None of those soldiers are fit. <laughs> they're not the soldiers. They're police. Yeah. Which they're that's... all Cobra Commander cosplayers. <laughs> they are. <laughs> 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 sure this is the right one I'd bet my ponytail on it yeah that's true this line he gives here just show, truly shows like how deranged they've made this president too mm-hmm. mm, yeah but <laughs> The the music takes away from that, but Snake's reaction there of just, just like, like, oh, uh, come yeah. on, <laughs> yeah, is great. The crazy-ass president. Crazy-ass. Broadcast worldwide, which is a thing you would say in a movie made in 1996. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because yes, the internet is. didn't really exist at that point. So. Like how they just have, like, a quick build uh, on a, uh, a, a quick pop, set. A pop-up pop set. set. Yeah. That's great. And before the before the the actual internet comes after us for that, we all know the internet existed in ninety six. Right. Yes. The modern internet as we know it didn't right. exist no. in ninety six. Not the efficient, speedy thing that we all have now. Yes. That runoff of the things that aren't allowed is a uh, yeah, little interesting nod. The, I don't need the teleprompter. Is a, a really, really, really strangely precedent. <laughs> yeah. Thing that we have to deal with nowadays. <laughs> right. Well, let me just take a stop so I can listen to this president. Yeah. Why do they have that TV in front of the in front of the electric chair? It's a requirement. Yep. Yeah. Everyone has to watch it, no matter what they're doing. <laughs> well, we've only got a thousand possible entries, so we have to wait six hours before they line up with one of the valid ones. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever looked at the actual like global coordinates for a specific location, but they're carried out to like eleven digits. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, they do they do the what they do the minute they go down to like out like hours, minutes, seconds, basically. Is yeah, how they refer yeah. They've, to that. they've got a couple different representations of those yeah. numbers, but yeah, yeah. The longitude and latitude goes multiple, multiple, yeah. multiple digits deep. You made me oh. listen to Steve Buscemi. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Tree is on. Sir, we've asked you to stop making donuts about getting pe- making jokes about getting people's units. Yes. <laughs> Swivel the camera around. Hey, is that hey. Snake Plissken? <laughs> yeah. He's way shorter than I thought. Yeah. Fire. Don't shoot each other. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> right. <laughs> huh? President confused. Yeah. Fuck, he's seen total recall. <laughs> yeah. Give me that freaking weapon. We would you I like that they call her out for that in a moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. The enemy. The enemy. They're coordinating multiple attacks down to the exact minute across the globe. Right. Yep. So is that more or less believable than the coordination in London has fallen? Uh, mm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's... Maybe more because they're actual like, militaries taking part in this? Mm. Fair. As opposed to dirt bike terrorists? <laughs> dirt bike terrorists. So three years of planning. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> that it's 666? Does yeah. that just drive you crazy? It does. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's there's over 400 countries. So if you had just singular targeting for countries as a whole, that would work. But they talked about later in the movie, or earlier in the movie, how you can target a single yeah, taxi a single cab taxi in Buenos yeah. Aires. Yeah. So. Which, I don't think EMPs work on combustion engines? Not what it de- there are a lot of depends on that, Max. Yeah, I'm gonna let are. that one lie for now, but yeah, yeah. 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 Um Yeah. Like I know it, in the nineties there were still like three hundred lines of code. 
in cars as compared to like the three million? If if you could create a pulse that was of significant amplitude such that it could damage the starter coil physically and any of the electronics at all, mm-hmm. you, you could potentially shut down an ICE, an internal combustion engine, with a large enough pulse. Mm. I, I I enjoy her assumption here that he just shut down the entire Earth as opposed then to... Then just hear gunfire. Yeah. Sorry, I said starter. I meant um, spark plugs. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that thing, that Not, looks like it came out of a Happy Meal. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Not the solenoid, like in War of the Worlds, that, which is what... <sighs> yeah, man, the solenoid. <laughs> which is what Tom Cruise replaces. I actually don't remember the context of that happening. They EMP the planet. They EMP all the cities. You can fry it. Yeah, you mm. can, that could fry a solenoid. If it's strong enough, it could. Oh, look at that. American spirit. This is mm. Stake only smokes American spirit. This is such a long ending. Mm-hmm. Yep. Typically, if you're gonna make a movie and have this kind of super drawn out end scene, the movie will have been good enough that you are winding down from some sort of emotional event. Yes. You know, happy, sad, funny. Well, you shut down the earth. <laughs> but it's not. No, no, not at all. In any of this movie, never. And then the weird <laughs> fourth wall, fourth wall. I just don't. Why? Why did that happen? <laughs> that yeah, just the weird, yeah, every... weird last length, weird, weird last thing. Oh. Yep. So, un. So more late Max facts. <laughs> Max, so, facts. Max facts. Max facts. All right. So this was proposed to be the second of a four-part movie series, with the third movie being Escape from Earth. <laughs> and then Escape from Mars. But because Escape from L.A. was such a terrible movie, that was never made a thing. And then later, John Carpenter just made Ghost from Mars. Mm. Yes, so. that's true. With Ice Cube in it. Mm. I actually haven't seen that. It's. I'm interested in seeing it regardless of if it's good or bad. Yeah, it's... Eh, I'm interested in the concept. It's better than this. It's a John Carpenter movie. Yeah. It's a late John Carpenter movie. Yeah. So. Another John Carpenter movie that I hadn't seen until recently that I love is uh, In the Mouth of Madness. Oh, I, I just so watched that. Uh, good. Ago. I yeah. like because I'm I'm a sucker for Sam Neill just in general. Yeah. But that is an excellent movie. That is uh the third of his apocalypse trilogy. Yeah, it's so with good. The thing, uh Prince of Darkness and In the Mouth of Madness. Yeah. Okay. Is the last one. Yeah, so I'm interested in expanding my uh my knowledge of Carpenter movies like you yeah. guys was because you, really you guys have kind of gotten me into it uh, aside from the first um, Halloween movie, which is a f- favorite of mine. I really haven't seen a lot of John Carpenter stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm liking to get into this more now that you guys showed me mm-hmm. the thing. Um, and then within the mouth of madness, so I, yep. I, I've, I've got some interest building yep. for his catalog. Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, overall a good one of my favorite directors just mm. because of, I don't know. They're cheesy, they're fun, but there's some actually like interesting filmmaking. That well, you like the a thing a lot. I do like the thing a That's lot. It's so good. Yeah. I mean, you should like the thing a lot. Well, but... yeah, I watch it like on the first day of winter every year. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's funny. It's fun to watch the movie with people who haven't seen it. And they're like, oh, I'm rooting for the dog. And they're like, oh, God, the dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. No, everything about that movie was awesome. Yeah. The thing. Very, very, very good. All right. So. View again, brew again, starting with Ryan. Oh, I won the coin toss. Yeah. Um, mm, view again. Nope. Never. No, never again. Don't want, I don't like this movie at all. <laughs> I have no nostalgia here, yeah. and I don't enjoy it. And it's it's so silly and weird and lazy at times. I just I don't like it. I'm not going to watch this movie again. Um, brew again. Yes, I like this a lot. But as I kind of mentioned earlier, I would prefer a, like a final absolution or a sin eater to, to sate my palate for instead of this but this is very good i like it a lot mm-hmm. this is good all right as far as i go uh view again nope not at all even though i <laughs> really do enjoy john carpenter as a director <laughs> i just there's nothing about this movie that i really want to watch again other than maybe just showing this movie to people to see how bad it is um as far as Brugen, uh yeah it's not going to be a frequent thing maybe like a once a once a year if that Hang glider puppets by wow. <laughs> Sorry, just the credits are no, still no, rolling no. here. It's, it's cool. It's cool. So yeah, um, Belgian quads are good. Uh, they're not a frequent style of beer for me. Um, 
but I don't find it as sweet as Final Absolution, which is the more readily available, more more widely appreciated beer, I, w- I would say. Also a lot cheaper. Um, wait, wait, hold on. It was Sugar Ray. Ten seconds down oh was performed God. by Sugar Ray. I was going to oh, make that no. joke, and it was right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, Max. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, okay. You're never going to finish you your... Done? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. Uh, good beer, um, but yeah, not... Not my, not my, not my go-to, but enjoyable. And James Thorpe, um, view again, maybe. Um, I think I can get what you would get out of this movie out of watching like a Mad Max movie instead, and I'd rather watch one of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movie to me, like, there's a little bit of nostalgia to it. Um, there's a little bit of enjoying the sets yeah. to it. Yeah, but. There's much better things to watch <laughs> out there, even in the in the realm of um, movies to have on while you're doing something else. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is this is low on the priority For list. Example, Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Or I mean, even you know some of the even like we we already did it, but Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Mm-hmm. I'd watch yeah. that before I watch this movie every time. Yep. Yep. And and you kind of get the same gist out of the two movies. Yeah, yeah. We we've, we've watched that movie just hanging out with our friends. Yeah. So that's that. Um, yes, I would drink this again readily. Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of the Gosa, Saison sour farmhouse ale mm-hmm. quad guy. Yep. So, <laughs> um, or I think well, you're more you're more of the IPA guy. Max. Yeah, I'm the IPA stout guy. But yeah. No. Yeah. I'm a total, yeah. total hophead. Yeah, and this this more or less kind of hits into the realm that that I like more. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I yeah. love IPA stuff, but I think yeah. I'm more into like the the sour and the stranger taste than than I think either you two are. Yeah, um, which you know that's one of the things about one of the things about beer. A lot of different stuff. You know, I can enjoy this beer, but you know, not my not my favorite. I mean, I I used to drink a lot more um, final. When I was a little younger, mm. one because yeah. it was like the big hot thing. It was like, hey, it's a ten percent beer, and right? It was, yeah. you know, wasn't that expensive for what it was. But I think just like as I've gotten a little older, like my palates have changed, and it's not, it's not a, it's it just it's too sweet. That that said, I think you and I still enjoy our finals from before Rift. Oh tracks. gosh, yeah. Our tall finals. Our like... tall final absolutions before going to see a Rift Tracks live. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yep. Wonderful. That's a thing we need to do again is get hammered and then go into another Rift Tracks. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, there's one coming up here in about a few weeks. So. Yep. Excellent. But I will not be it as I will be on my way to Japan. 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 The, uh, okay. Anyway. Anyways. So uh, thanks for joining in. Uh, as always, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, like and review or whatever. Uh, you can check us out on our website at gbbvpodcast.wordpress.com. Um, send us your hate mail at uh, goodbrewsbadviews at gmail.com. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Please uh, view and drink responsibly. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>